Hey everybody, it's Benny One, and I'm back at you with another Halloween movie review, everybody, and we're moving on to Halloween 2, everyone. The direct original sequel to Halloween, everybody. This movie came out in 1981. So yes, there actually was a, another original sequel to the original Halloween movie. Now I know that there is another sequel, the 2018 Halloween movie, and then its own trilogy, there's a bunch of different timelines in this Halloween franchise. Because you have the original timeline that was the first Halloween, the second Halloween, and then Halloween 4, 5, and 6. Because then Halloween 3 did its own little thing, which we will talk about when we review it. But then you also had the H2O timeline and Halloween Resurrections timeline where they acted like 4, 5, and 6 did not happen. And then you have the Rob Zombie timeline where he made his two movies, Halloween and then Halloween 2. I really liked his original Halloween. And then you have this new timeline where the original Halloween happened and none of the other movies exist except for this new trilogy. And we are finally getting the third and final part, Halloween Ends, in just a few days, everybody. I'm super jacked for that movie. So yes, today we are talking about the original Halloween 2. Whew, this franchise is confusing. <laughs> so yes, three years later, we get a direct follow-up sequel. And this movie literally picks up literally where the last movie ended. They show the very final scene. Um, we get a new shot of Michael from the outside of the house that Lori was babysitting in being shot and fallen off of the house. And you can clearly see that the guy that did that fell on a big pad thing. They didn't do a very good job of hiding that in the movie, unfortunately. But, And then the movie picks up where Halloween 2 starts, where Dr. Loomis runs downstairs and you can see where Michael's body was laying and everything. And that's where Halloween 2 starts. So yeah, it directly picks up right after the first one. And that's what I have always loved about this second movie is is that it literally it's back to back you can watch the first halloween and this one and they fit so well together and we will dive into why i think that but first we're going to talk about the director and that is rick rosenthal everybody he came on to direct this because john carpenter who helped write this and produce this and did the music for it once again he was busy i think he was doing assault on precinct 13 no may, or maybe it was the thing i think he was actually working on the thing i'm not 100 percent sure it was one of those movies um so he could not come and do this so but yes he did a good i think rick did a fantastic job directing this because this movie feels and it's paced and everything pretty closely to the first halloween i really think he did a fantastic job capturing and doing what John Carpenter did with directing in the first Halloween. Now, obviously he brings a little bit of his like flair and taste to this, but I think he really keeps it very similar so that they flow together very, very well. And of course, Jamie Lee Curtis is back in a god-awful wig because she had cut her hair by this time. Um, that was her real hair in the first Halloween, but this one... She was wearing a very bad wig, and she's playing Laurie Strode once again, showing what happened after she was attacked in the first movie. And what we get from her in this movie is great. Um, the unfortunate side of her character is, is she's basically in a drug-induced trance this whole movie almost until the very end. So your main star, unfortunately, is not in this movie a ton, which is really unfortunate that they chose to go that route and it's interesting because halloween kills did the same thing that kind of took her out of the movie for the most part so i found it interesting that they did that in this movie um it was just an odd choice for me but what we got from her at the end of the movie was it was i liked what we got except for the part where she's in the car with um I think it's bit not I think it's Billy and he when he passes out because he's basically has a concussion and everything from when he fell on the little pool of blood of a victim that Michael left and he gets in the car and passes out and his head falls on the horn 
and she gets out of the car and Loomis and the nurse from the first movie with the sheriff are coming to the hospital, going in the hospital entrance, and she can't talk for some reason. She can't scream, yell for help. She's just like nails clawing at the ground and she just can't speak for some reason, even though she was very clearly just talking to somebody, like not even two minutes before. So that was kind of odd, but for the most part, I enjoyed her performance of what we got from her. And then, of course, Donald Pleasance is back as Sam Loomis, Dr. Loomis, everybody. And he is super frantic and crazy in this movie because he shot Michael six times at the end of the first movie. And he is just batshit loose cannon in this movie. Like, we have to stop this person because he flat out is like he's not even human he's evil like evil like it's just <laughs> the way he says it and it's even more in this movie like this character is just cranked up a notch in this one now i don't think they took it too far in this like they did in the fourth the fifth and the fifth one um but yeah you could see the signs of where his character went in the fourth and fifth Halloween movie and then in the sixth one he was just really old so but yeah Donald Pleasance loved his portrayal of Loomis again in this movie and like I said he they cranked his character like the panic level up on him but it wasn't like too far um and then we have a different Michael Myers and this Dick Warlock everybody plays Michael Myers and the mask in this movie from what I've read it's the same mask that Nick Castle wore in the first movie, but it looks different on his face. I don't know why, but it, it, it looks like a different mask. And I always thought it was a different mask. But like I said, from what I have read, I maybe I've read the wrong stuff. I don't know, but it doesn't look like the same mask to me. It looks like it's the Shatner mask, but they did a little tweaking to it. Um, like the hair is very slicked back in almost all of this movie, like really slicked back. Whereas like in the original one, it was it's kind of messy, a little bit messy. So I thought the mask looked a little off and his portrayal as Michael is, I, I like it, but I don't think he's nearly as good as Nick Castle um, or James Jude Courtney, who's in the new ones along with Nick Castle. Um, I just don't think he's quite as good. Um, and I think he's shorter than Nick Castle because at least he looks like he is. So, but he does a pretty good job. And the kills in the movie, they amp those up. The movie's gorier because by this time, the first Friday the 13th had been out. So they were like, well, we got to up the gore a little bit. Because that's not what the first Halloween was about, was the gore. It was not about that. So to help improve the story parts of this movie that were lacking a little bit, they decided to let's put some more badass kills and let's up the gore and the body count in this movie to kind of make up for it. And it does. It makes up for the weaker aspects of the story of this movie. Like your main uh, girl character not being in the movie that much. So you get all that to fill it in until we get to the final showdown in the movie, which helps out with the story. So, so yes, and like I said, the score was done by John Carpenter. It had a very synth 80s vibe to it going on a lot. Like, I, I prefer the score in the original Halloween compared to this one. Um, I like the score. I like the synthesized sounding 80s stuff that they added into the Halloween theme. I, I don't mind it. I just think the score was better in the original Halloween. Um, and then we're going to come to the aspect of the story of Michael Myers being Laurie Strode's brother and it was a secret and they unveiled that towards the end of this movie and where uh, Loomis was being told by the nurse that the governor ordered these documents to be released and he should have been allowed to read them and when she was adopted by the Strodes they wanted that shit filed so that and locked they didn't want anybody looking at it um, because she uh, was adopted because the Michael's parents died shortly after she was born. Um, I think Michael had been in the, the sane asylum or whatever for like two years, I think when she was born or something like that. So, but yeah, so it, and it, it I feel like I, I always felt like when I was younger, it didn't really bother me that much that that was thrown in here. But now as an adult, it really doesn't make a lot of sense. And they, 
they kind of just throw it in this movie. Like, all of a sudden, it's just thrown in, and, like, Lori's having this crazy drug-induced dream because she's out of it. And she can somehow hear the blood dripping from the one nurse that's being bled to death that Michael somehow knows how to put a freaking suit, like, blood... Like, if you're giving blood and everything in a tube and she's just dripping, I, you know, I don't know. I guess they really teach people how to do shit in insane asylums, like drive cars and all sorts of goofy stuff. So, but she somehow hears this dripping and she's having this dream of her as a young girl walking up to Michael in the insane asylum. And you get a little flashback with um, Lori, like the Strode mom and everything and her saying, I'm not your mom and it was it really felt forced like if they would have set it up in the first one where they brought up this document that dr loomis didn't know about and it was sealed by the by the courts if they would have kind of laid the groundwork for it in the first one and then did this in the second one it would have made more sense and it wouldn't have felt so forced into the movie so but the movie as i said is a direct sequel that picks up on the same night they're great to watch back to back. Awesome movies to watch back to back. I used to always watch, before I saw Halloween 3 when I was a kid, I would watch both of these movies on Halloween night because they're perfect together. The pacing, the style, the way that the movies were shot and filmed and everything. Like the director of this one kept the atmosphere and everything that the first Halloween movie had that John Carpenter did. So they're perfect two movies to watch back to back together so halloween 2 everybody i'm gonna give it an 8 out of 10 i think it's a good follow-up and sequel to that masterpiece of a movie that the original halloween was everybody so an 8 out of 10 everybody for 1981's hollywood halloween 2 everybody i hope you guys enjoyed that review i thank you for watching and i'll be catching you on the tube laters because i have spoken <laughs>